Today's exercise is the stainless steel crown restoration. Indications have been discussed in class, so you just need to follow the guides. Stainless steel crowns are used in the full coverage restoration of both primary and young permanent teeth. The armamentarium for this laboratory exercise includes crown contouring pliers, crown crimping pliers, mirror, spatula, plastic instrument, college pliers, perio probe, large spoon excavator, heatless stone, burlew wheel, and the proper burrs for this exercise, number 245 and a 133F finishing stone, and the stainless steel crown. Local anesthesia is normally required for this exercise. Some of these teeth will already have been pulpily treated or may need pulp therapy, but you will still be required to proniate soft tissue anesthesia for the stainless steel crown fabrication. In the event that it's pulpily treated, you can administer an infiltration or you may administer papillary infiltrations around the marginal gingiva. Whenever a rubber dam is required, anesthesia is also required. A rubber dam clamp should be placed on the tooth distal to the one you work on. Today's exercise involves the fabrication of a stainless steel crown on tooth letter K, the mandibular left second primary molar. A Bowley gauge or a perioprobe can be used to measure mesiodistal dimension. Our tooth measures about 10 millimeters. From the stainless steel crown kit, which provides an assortment of sizes for the mandibular left second primary molars, we select an appropriate crown that matches the 10 millimeter measurement that we took from the typodont tooth letter K. In our case, a size 3 is an appropriate selection. In the event the tooth in question is grossly decayed, one should obtain crown dimensions from the corresponding tooth in the contralateral arch. Once anesthesia is achieved, we're ready to begin the exercise. We select a number 245 tapered fissure burr. Using the number 245 burr, we want to produce pilot cuts or guide cuts on the occlusal surface, establishing a one millimeter depth cut. Then you connect all of the guide cuts. I did the buccal surface, and I do the same thing from the lingual surface. The end result is a uniform reduction that mimics the shape of the original tooth. Then switch the burr to a number 133F diamond. What you want to do is to slice directly through the proximal surface. Starting from the buccal surface, you want to reduce or eliminate contact without creating a ledge in the proximal space and or damaging the approximating tooth. Switch to the distal surface. Perform the same procedure. Then you can use an explorer, in this case we're using a perioprobe, slide through the proximal surface to ensure that you don't have contact. You look at the preparation so far and you notice that it is occlusally square. Notice that you've squared off the distal and the mesial proximal walls, and that all these line angles are sharp. If you study the internal detail of the crown, everything is rounded. Your preparation needs to reflect that roundness. So we go back to the preparation and round or bevel all line angles. Next, take the pre-selected stainless steel crown and seat the lingual surface first, and with firm finger pressure, seat the crown over the prepared tooth. The snap indicates it's rolling over a height of contour, which is what gives you the retention that we're looking for. We then check the occlusion and can see that we're almost in occlusion, but most significant is the fact that the crown is too long. If we take an explorer and tease back the gingiva, we see that the crown length is in excess of one millimeter subgingival. So next, we'll shorten the crown length so that the crown will seat to a position where the gingival margin of the crown is one millimeter below the free gingival margin. First, we score a thin line using a sharp spoon excavator resting on the free gingival margin. If you use an explorer to do this procedure, the scratch mark will be too wide, so use a sharp spoon excavator. Do the same thing on the lingual surface. 
Then use the spoon excavator to lift the crown off the prepared tooth. Now study the position of the scratch line. You can see that the scratch line is well below, greater than one millimeter, longer than the position of the scratch line. So this crown needs to be shortened. We use a heatless stone to shorten the crown. Hold the handpiece so that you can see where the scratch line is. With the heatless stone, we shorten the length of the crown. The proximal reduction is a line that connects the buccal line and lingual line and rises up in the proximal space. Inside the crown, the heatless stone leaves a burr that can only be removed with a spoon excavator. So you just scrape the burr out. Remove the residual stainless steel that is forced internal of the crown. Go back to the typodont for another seating and a second scoring of the height of the free gingiva. You want to repeat this until you reach a point where the line doesn't change. Continue with the shortening of the margins and repeat the removal of the burr using a large spoon excavator. Return to the preparation and reseat. Position it back in the typodont and check the occlusion. Test the occlusion with articulating paper. The crown is in occlusion. Gingival length is one millimeter below the free gingival margin. Now we test the adaption by taking the tine end of an explorer and feeling below the free gingival margin to determine if there are any open margins. We do this buccally, lingually, and proximally. Note that you should not be able to lift the crown with the explorer. Since I can, it means our marginal fit is not tight enough. Marginal adaption over height of contour provides retention, not cement. Go back to the spoon excavator and lift the crown off. We want to use the contouring plier to contour the gingival third of the stainless steel crown. Place the rounded end inside and in an overlapping fashion, going around the margin of the crown, squeezing the contouring plier. We have contoured the gingival third, and now we're going to crimp the margins to tighten the stainless steel. This final adaption will snap the margins over all height of contours. Using a 139 plier, turn it so that the rounded end fits inside the crown. Using the crimping plier, crimp the margin all the way around in overlapping crimps. About the last two millimeters of the length of the crown is where you're crimping. Go back to the typodont, and in a lingual to buckle roll with firm finger pressure, you reseat the crown. The adaptation still requires some adjustment. We're going to lift it and crimp it again. Then, go back to the typodont to reseat the crown, and you can hear the snap fit. Check the occlusion. So now we have a crown that is nearly complete and in occlusion. Marginal adaptation has been done. It fits to a point one millimeter below the gingival margin. The only thing left to do is to finish and polish and then cement. Lift the crown off again. What we've done in shortening the length of the crown is to remove the knife edge finish that it had. You can see that there's a blunt margin where the stainless steel crown adapts to the tooth. What we need to do is to take the heatless stone again and using an angle recreate the knife edge in the last one millimeter of the crown. We're not shortening it, just recreating a knife edge finish to the margin. Remove the heatless stone, switch to a burly wheel, and repeat the same thing, creating a smooth, polished finish. It removes the scratches and polishes the bevel. Now we are prepared for cementation. We have our crown ready to go and a dry, isolated field. Cementation of the crown is achieved by using a glass ionomer like Keytac cement. It is important to follow manufacturer's mixing instruction and to work fast as the cement sets fairly rapidly. You want a looting consistency of cement and this material is going to start setting as soon as you finish spatulating. So you want to have everything prepared. The rubber dam may be removed at this point and cotton roll isolation is achieved. Use an adequate amount of cement just enough to fill up the crown. Have the patient bite the crown into occlusion. Do not use a bite stick or a cotton roll. Biting on a roll or bite stick is going to create hypoocclusion and overseat the crown. When the cement reaches a gelled state, you begin a removal of the excess material proximally and subgingively. This may be achieved with a carving instrument and dental floss. Floss the interproximal areas to remove excess cement. Please remember that time is of essence as the cement sets rapidly. Case completed.